um, Museum on Main Street is actually a unique alliance. It's between the Smithsonian Institute Touring Exhibit Services. <laughs> Thankfully, they just call that sites. And they work with local humanities councils, in our case, Oklahoma Humanities, and local communities to bring a small-scale Smithsonian exhibit to rural areas in those states. Uh, so we are happy to be able to give the states the opportunity to have part of the Smithsonian come to them. Um, it is starting on July 20th in Anadarko, and it will be there for six weeks. And, you know, our hope is that bringing the Smithsonian and being able to use their name will help the local areas grow capacity, bring in more visitors, and help them be set up to host other traveling exhibits in the future. Okay, <laughs> on July the 20th, we will start at 9 a.m. It's on a Saturday, and that is the, our opening day there in Anadarko. It's going to be at 215 West Broadway, Anadarko. It's actually the Anadarko uh, Community Library. We are going to be shutting the library down itself that day, but at 9 a.m. from 9 to 10, we'll have a opening ceremony. We'll have House Speaker Representative uh, Tony Hassenbeck coming in. She'll be doing a 15-minute uh, talk. Then we also have the Teacher of the Year, Cody Farr, who happens to be a history teacher at Anadarko. He's going to be speaking. And then last but not least, we'll have ex-Mayor Beverly Wilhoyt. From, uh, she's Oklahoma City, but she's moving back to her hometown in Anadarko. She's going to speak as well. And our uh, MC that day will be Kelly McLaughlin. She is the Mayor of Anadarko. So that's from 9 to 10, then 10 o'clock we will have a ribbon cutting ceremony, and then after the ceremony we will open the doors from 10 to 5 that day for the people of Caddo County and the surrounding areas. And uh, it is 11 pieces, and there'll be three pieces uh, up front as soon as you walk into the library. And these pieces are about 7 foot tall to 7 to 8 foot wide phenomenal pieces that just give you goosebumps when you go through the whole thing. So then off to the side of one room, we'll have eight other pieces. But not only that, we have a table of swag, we have a refreshment table, we have a book table. Uh, Uncle Sam's going to be there, hopefully passing out some goodies. And it's just going to be a remarkable time and great for the surrounding communities. Very important guests. And I have to throw out one more thing. From 10 to 5, while it's open inside, outside, we have a stage set up. And we'll have music the whole entire time from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And I have to give a shout out to all my entertainers. The first one will be Blake Taylor and Friends. Then we'll have Patrick Redbird. He is a full blood Kiowa. Indian, and he's going to play the flute for us. And then we have Christopher Dysinger, Brighton Varner, Anthony Williamson. His stage name is Giaton Day. That's what he goes by. And then last but not least is Richard Clift Jr. And they're all fantastic musicians. Thank you. Yes. Yes, Teresa has jumped in and run. I just have to give her a shout out because she jumped in and we said, by the way, this is all yours now. And <laughs> from the day that I met her until now, she has built such a wonderful experience. Yes. I can't wait for everybody to come out and visit the exhibit in Anadarko and see what Teresa has put together. It's yes. wonderful. And if they want to stay all day, that's fantastic. We even have a food truck, Fishes and Loaves, that will be there to provide food. If somebody wants to eat, we'll have tables, chairs. Um, it's it's going to be a great day. concentrating their efforts on getting rural voices for representation. Um, they want to know the local stories to connect to the, to the national stories that are happening, and they want to give the local areas their own choice to say what stories they want to share in that history. Um, this exhibit is actually part of a larger exhibit that is at the Museum of American History that's part of the Smithsonian, and it's called uh, American Democracy, A Great Leap of Faith. And so Voices and Votes is going to take us from when we decided to give power to the citizens up till now. So we want the stories of the citizens. We want people's voting stories. We want to you know, start those discussions about what it means to be a citizen, what your rights and responsibilities are, because the story is ever-changing with democracy. Mm -hmm. So 
and we want to hear what Anna Darko yes. feels about a market team, what the stories of people in Anna Darko and surrounding visitor stories are. Code. When you leave the building, there's a big um, uh, poster, a uh, vinyl poster that's got the QR code and you can scan that code and fill out that survey. And we urge everybody that goes through it to fill out that survey for us. Yes. Okay, yeah, and the Smithsonian, they just started that this year doing the QR code because we wanted to get people's emotions and stories while they were in the exhibit. Yes. So the QR code is gonna make it a lot easier for us to get at the moment feelings instead of trying to make someone remember when they get home. So yes, please take advantage of the QR code in doing the yeah. survey. Because it comes to us, it goes to Anadarko, but it also helps Smithsonian plan future tours and see what, you know, people in these rural areas want to talk about. For Anadarko, it opens again July the 20th. It will be seen through August 31st, so it's a six-week stint for Anadarko. And you can see it during our opening hours of the library. 9 to 6, Monday through Thursday, 9 to 5 on Fridays, and Saturdays 9 to 12 for six weeks. Yes. And then after Anna Darko, it will move to Cheyenne, and then Swasu and Weatherford, and then it will end at the Bethany Public Library. Um, each stop will get it for six weeks. There's a week between each stop because the host sites actually have to put the exhibits together mm -hmm. themselves. So we ship them from place to place. And then every host site, like Anna Darko and their volunteers, actually builds the exhibit. The Smithsonian mm -hmm. has made it so all the tools and everything come in a box. Um, so it will be touring until J January of 2025. And our website, it's okhumanities.org, has all the stops and all the dates. So if for some reason someone can't make it to Anna Darko, it'll tell you the other sites that are coming up next. All I can say is the very first piece when you walk in will give you goosebumps because it, like I said, it's seven feet high, seven to eight feet wide, but as soon as you walk in, that very first piece has a copy of the Declaration of Independence. And that just does something to you when you see that whole entire piece and uh, you get that wonderful feeling that you're proud to be an American. That's what, you know, I feel. That's yeah, it's great. really great. From the beginning yeah. through the end, it goes through suffrage, it goes mm -hmm. through civil rights. There's actually a screen where you can hear people's stories of their first yes. time going to vote. Um, so it's a really interactive mm -hmm. exhibit. You're not just looking at walls. There's videos. Mm -hmm. There's things you can listen to. There's amazing posters. So, yes. you know, just to let everybody know, you know, it's great for the whole family. There's right. activities that you can do, but for history buffs, it's amazing. Yes, exactly. But it really does, you know, it just takes you back and gives you a timeline to remember. It does, you know, it does. How we're all in this together. Yeah. I think that's the big thing the Smithsonian mm -hmm. wants to do is all of us matter in this story, it and does. that's what the exhibit is about, yeah. like finding similarities yeah. and it's, how we all work yeah. together and how we're part of the same story. But all of us are yeah. also responsible for making that story better. <laughs>